Two years to save the world. That is the existential message from the UN Climate Change Executive Secretary Simon Steele this week, saying that we need to take action and fast on global warming. Now, his appeal comes, as March said, a new monthly record for global heat for the 10th straight month in a row. Now, the hunt for solutions to reduce planet heating emissions is driving some to revisit energy sources that might be considered to be controversial. Well, to talk more about this, I'm joined in the studio now by the BBC's climate correspondent, Carl Nassman. Um, Carl, I think when we talk about nuclear energy, I think it's fair to say some people might associate that with uh, Fukushima, Chernobyl, for example. I mean, how could this be used in driving down greenhouse gas, right. gas emissions? Many say now it actually is going to play a crucial role going forward. Nuclear power, of course, doesn't produce any carbon emissions. The International Energy Agency said they're very influential that without nuclear power, we will not be able to meet our climate goals in time. This is technology, though, that's really progressing quickly. This is not your old school nuclear power plant. Companies are developing what are called small modular reactors. These are like many nuclear power stations. I've been speaking with Brett Kugelmoss. He's the founder of a company called Last Energy. And I began by asking him if nuclear energy is ready to go mainstream. Nuclear energy should be the premier energy source on planet Earth. Period, hands down, end of story. What you get out of nuclear is millions of times more powerful on a per mass basis or per material input basis than any other energy source that we have. It's an incredible way to transform society, to launch humanity into the next generation of energy abundance. If you look though at the US, it's still around 20% of the energy mix right now. Why isn't it then bigger? There are a lot of challenges. Many of our presidents, JFK, ran a campaign on making it 100% of the US nuclear energy source, but the whole industry stagnated back in the 70s, before Three Mile Island, before any of the talk of these accidents, the industry ground to a halt. Much due to market incentives and structure at the time, and then this notion of it being taboo, as you mentioned earlier, simply arose from societal superstition more than factual reality. Tell me about what you are designing, what your prototypes are. These are not your traditional nuclear reactors. We can see a, a few pictures of some mock-ups here behind us. These are essentially miniature nuclear power plants? Yeah, so in order to course correct many of the stagnation problems that the industry had had, we decided to address cost and time to delivery first and foremost. And so what we did was we went back to previous designs, nuclear reactors that were built on ships, where you could employ standard manufacturing processes to be able to deliver reliably and cost effectively. That's the technology that we brought to the modern era. Are there concerns around safety? What's the safety protocol for, for these smaller reactors? Many people are concerned with safety or waste, and they have every right to feel that way. But people's notion of radiation being this disproportionate hazard simply belies reality. That being said, people have every right to feel that way, and it's incumbent upon us to address those concerns. So what we do is we employ a pretty unique strategy. We dig a giant hole, we drop our reactor in the ground, we surround it with 500 metric tons of steel, and that makes everyone feel better. <laughs> now, these are smaller reactors. They're enough to power, what, about 20,000 homes? We're talking about 920 megawatts here. How do you think these might be used? And, and why a nuclear reactor? Why not just uh, put up some solar panels or, or wind power for that electricity? People have tried, but the problem with alternate energy solutions is it doesn't meet what the customer needs. The customer needs power all the time, not when the wind you know, blows or the sun shines. And nuclear is uniquely capable of delivering that, but even more so scaling to the abundance that humanity needs to meet future energy needs. And so where we see this most pressing right now is in Europe, given their energy crisis, and specifically in the industrial and manufacturing sectors and data centers, which is what we specifically have designed our product to service. That's what I wanted to ask you. You know, who is your customer that would say, hey, let's put a nuclear power plant behind our backyard? I mean, uh, where are these, do you think, going to end up being installed? Yeah, so we have contracts right now uh, for over 55 of our units, the ones that you see on the screen. 
About half of those are for industries such as steel mills or aluminum or paper, like pulp and paper factories. And then the other half, especially with the advance of AI, we've just seen a surge of orders come in from data center companies. So this is our biggest growth area now. Looking ahead, what is the biggest hurdle standing in the way? I know one of your goals is to build 10,000 mini reactors worldwide. How possible In just the next 15 years. Is that possible? Yes, absolutely. So all we're doing is applying standard manufacturing processes from the automotive industry, and we're bringing those to the power delivery industry. Most power plants around the world are custom designed for each individual site. And we're taking you know, a note out of you know, Ford's you know, book to essentially bring assembly line manufacturing processes in order to be able to scale production. So 10,000 is just the beginning of our ambition. At 10,000 units live, we'll be delivering more energy every year than Saudi Aramco. We want to get up to 100,000 online. Mm. And that could end up putting a pretty big dent in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, Brett Kugelmoss, founder and CEO of Last Energy, a DC-based startup developing these modular nuclear power plants. Thank you so much for coming by. Thanks for having me. And so, Carl, you know, certainly some big ambitions sketched out there in that interview. We also saw the prototype as well. But how likely is it that we'll be seeing anything like that anytime mm -hmm. soon? Well, that prototype, interestingly enough, will be in D.C. on Monday. He's bringing mm -hmm. it here. It's going to be, you know, just a, a few feet from the White House, actually. But, you know, there's a lot of potential here for these smaller reactors. But nuclear in general, it's seen a lot of speed bumps. It takes a long time to develop and build. It's still very expensive, especially when you compare it to something like solar panels or wind turbines. And there are, of course, still those concerns about safety, still those concerns about nuclear waste. Although this next generation technology, a lot of inventors say it solves a lot of those problems. It uses far less fuel, for example. At the COP28 climate conference in Dubai, it was really interesting to hear, this was back in December, but nearly two dozen nations pledged to triple their nuclear energy capacity in the coming year. So it's likely that we will see more nuclear power. The question will be how quickly it will be rolled out, how, how fast that can happen, and whether it happens in time to really start to make a dent in climate emissions. And that public perception as well. Uh, the BBC's climate correspondent, Carl Nassman. Carl, thank you so much for that.